Hi there, this is Professor Juris, and um, rainy day here in Dayton, and I just wanted to make you a videotape and um, talk a little bit about um, studio lights and studio lighting and um, how to proceed with that if you're um, going to start your own studio or you're taking uh, my studio photography class and you need to know what kind of lights to get and so forth, so... Um, we're going to talk about that and talk about your choices and um, give you the pros and cons of both. So what I want to do in this video is start at the low end or the low price end of um, lighting and then move up from there. So these are the very basic lights that um, you can use and um, for taking uh, studio indoor photography. Um, or for doing portraits, etc. Now this is just a reflector. You're still going to have to get a bulb to go inside this, and then you will still need to get um, stands or something to actually put this on. I used to use these a lot when um, I was doing bigger setups. Like um, one time I was photographing, a, I did a whole series of photographs of bikers and. Um, they would bring their their bike their bikes in their Harleys and so forth and um, set them up in my studio. I had a big studio, and then um, I would use a lot of these for accent lights, but still use strobe light with the accent light. So I might put like a red bulb in one of these if I wanted to uh, throw some red light on and so forth. And these are also good too if you want to use like a hair light, um, but you need to have it bright enough so that the strobe doesn't wipe it out if you're, you know, doing it. Um, and you could also put a small um, screw in strobe bulb in here that um, that fires by a slave that that'll set it off when your strobe goes off it would set this off and you know so that's that's another thing of these um the nice thing about these is the price um now i looked at a very similar light at lowe's i was in lowe's the other day and they had a similar one and it was over twenty dollars and i'm not sure if it's the same exact one but um you could find these at like ace handyman lowe's um, walmart has them in the painting department i think i think i saw these in walmart in the painting aisle and um, they had some for about eight dollars so it's not it's not costing you a lot for an investment um and they are handy to have around. They're also good for copy lights. Like if you wanted to make your own copy stand to photograph artwork, um, these lights are really good. But um, the thing to remember with these is that you're going to need to put a bulb in them. And for doing portraits, um, whether you're doing uh, portraits of people or uh, portraits of animals or even if you're um, just photographing, um, well, if you're photographing food for like a restaurant, um, uh, menu or for a restaurant website um, these these will work good for that um, but the important thing is that you need to make sure you get a daylight balanced bulb um, with the daylight temperature otherwise you're going to get all kind of color shifts going on um, I'm assuming that um, you're using a digital camera so you're you're using digital for this assignment but or for for these lights so um, these also work good for film though um, but again you need to use the right um, color temperature if you're using it for color film um, and um, for black and white film you could use any bulb um, the temperature though will matter in the um, in the pictures too with black and white because it, it'll influence like how the different skin tones look and so forth in a portrait um, if you're doing a portrait and how other how shadows are, are either brighter or um, darker and so forth with the temperature of the um, the light. So I would suggest you watch my my video on white balance um, in your camera to kind of get an idea and then watch the video. Um, there's a number of videos on YouTube about um, color temperature. So you want to make sure you understand color temperature with um, using these lights. And I just pulled this uh, little example off of um, on one of these lights it might even have been under this light under um, Amazon Let's see if I move that if it's there yeah, but it's, it's it was under one of the lights I was looking at so I did a screenshot of it but this is the daylight temperature and then this is a warm light so by buying a different bulb when you're buying bulbs um, you would you would see that the bulb would be warmer if you're using a warm tone light or if um, using daylight temperature and that that really does affect like skin tones and so forth so you want to 
make sure you get the bulb, the right bulb. And I have a bulb picked out here too. Let me show you the bulb. Um, and this was on Amazon. That's where I got the little thing at right there. So there's there's the soft, it's soft white they're calling, but it's actually warm and then uh, daylight temperature. And these are pretty good bulbs right here. I actually have some of these bulbs. Um, it, it's important too that you, um, when you're looking at bulbs, let's see if I can scroll up here a minute. It's important that you understand how much um, light is actually coming out of the bulb, and that's usually measured in terms of lumens. I was looking um, to see if this says how many lumens these bulbs has, and it doesn't, but it's um, equivalent to a 65-watt bulb. So if you remember old household light bulbs um, and that were just incandescent light bulbs, this would be a equivalent to a 65-watt bulb. And... Um, you know, back when I used all um, incandescent bulbs, if I had a 65 watt bulb in the ceiling of my of a room and stuff, it would be very dimly lit. So a 65 watt bulb is not very bright. You might want to try to get a hundred or something, depending on what you're doing. But for these clamp-on painting lights, the 65 watt bulb might be nice because, especially for doing portraits, because it's not super bright. Um, and you can get it close to the subject and so forth. So this may be a good bulb to use for your um, your portrait lighting assignments, and it would be fine for you know copy work and stuff. And the thing about digital photography that's different than um, than film photography is you don't need as much light um, to do things um, because you can adjust the um, the film speed and so forth. When you're using a film camera, you bought a roll of film, and that's the the speed you are stuck with. Um, but with a digital camera, you can, you know, simply adjust the uh, the film speed and make it um, more sensitive to light or less sensitive to light um, in order to get the uh, f-stops that you want. And again, when you're working with portraits, uh, most of the time you're going to be shooting with your lens pretty much wide open, you know, unless you're doing a, like a portrait with two people and you wanted to make sure you had the people behind the, the first person in focus, like you were doing a group or something or twins. Um, then you would need a little more depth of field. You might want to stop down to like F8, but you generally don't want to stop down to like, you know, F16 or F22 with a portrait unless you're trying to do something very dramatic um, and you're photographing um, someone that um, has like a lot of um, uh, their skin. You want to really pick up their skin tone or their skin, uh, things in their skin like wrinkles or something, and you want to try to make something very dramatic and edgy. So then you would stop the lens down. But this, for the most part, would be um, a good bulb for you working um, with portraits because you want soft light, basically. Um, and not soft light as far as, was, was this called, let's see. Yeah, you, not soft light as far as like what that's saying. That's talking about color temperature. Um, and what I mean by soft is you just don't want no big, harsh light on the, um, on the subject, which will lead me to my next um, thing. Um, so I also wanted to show you the kind of lights that you want to stay away from. And um, this is a halogen light. Let's see if, I, if it'll give me this stuff here about it. Um, it's a thousand watt, um, a thousand watt halogen light bulb right here. It says, and it's a work light. And you really want to stay away from that because these will um, really blind people. They're so bright. I mean, you could like land airplanes with these lights. So. The, the, you'd have to if you did use these like you could use these if you maybe put them 10 foot away from um, a plastic wall and shot the light through plastic like a, a roll of visqueen if you were doing like car photography or something if you put like three of these behind um, behind a, a big sheet of visqueen and then um, you know shot the light through that visqueen you could produce a fairly soft light as long as these were far enough away but these are really and they are dangerous because they get really hot um, they can catch things on fire. So, but I just wanted if you might have one of these in your garage or something. I actually had a few students, um, you know, pick these up and try to use these, and that's the reason I'm showing you that this is a pr pretty much a no-no for um, for your lighting. But um, if you do happen to have one of these around, the stand looks pretty nice. I mean, so you could you could use this stand for putting other lights on, like a strobe light or a um, flash or something like that, but the, the stand is probably more useful than these lights. So with using the clamp-on painting lights, um, you'll need two of those lights and you'll need some of these bulbs to um, produce portraits and so forth. We're going to use one of them as a fill light and one of them as a main light. Then 
The other thing you will need is something to um, clamp those clamp on lights to. As you see here, there's a um, there's a clamp on there, and that's what you're going to use to clamp it to something. Um, see if there's a picture of that, but yeah, like here here is person's photographing, and see, you can see this little setup too. It looks pretty nice the way they're doing this. So you can use these in a number of ways. Like I was talking about food photography. Um, but you do have to have something to clamp it on. And you can use your regular, um, you could use a tripod, you could use lighting stands for photography. So a um, quick, easy way to get, get lighting, but um, by sure not the, not the end all or um, solution to having great lights. Or if you really want to have start a studio um, and you're thinking about, you know, having studio photography, you especially don't want to be... Um, at a at a point where you want to go professional or you want to own your own studio you don't want to be bringing people in and um you know lighting them with these chintzy lights you want to get some good lights so that you can get um you know get good results so the next thing that i want to look at is um, photogenic strobe lights and uh, photogenic was actually my first set of studio strobes that i bought um back in um like 1979 or so forth um i bought them and they were not um standalones where they they actually plugged into a power pack and what what mono lights mean if we look at this the photogenic mono lights it means that the whole power pack is in here so this this will have a cord going off of it and um, you plug this light into the wall and um or you could plug it into something like a, a vagabond battery pack that'll actually power this that um, will have enough power to power this for many many flashes like if you're going to an old warehouse or something and you want to um, you won't have electricity there or some abandoned building and you wanted to still use your light you can um, do that by using a vagabond power pack and um, Paul C buff which is the next um, light we're going to look at um, or place for lighting is going to uh, show that and you can buy these directly from photogenic or you can buy these from um, b &H photo they have them both and you might even be able to find some of these at a local camera shop the two that I'm going to show you or the two companies that I'm going to talk about is Paul C. Buff and Photogenic. And the reason I've chosen these to talk to you about is I have both of them. Um, I use them both in my studio and um, very dependable, very well built and made in the USA um, for the most part. Um, I think there's some parts or some parts of the light that probably is not made in the USA, but um, and probably maybe some of their low end lights that some of these company that either of these companies might sell maybe not, might not be made in the USA, but you can certainly give them a call um, if that's important to you and um, get one of the lights that is made in the USA. But um, the lights that I have are these um, Studio Max. They're two forty nine a piece, and if you get two of them, um, you got five hundred bucks wrapped up into it. Um, and then you need to get some lighting stands and maybe a couple of soft boxes. So we're going to look at soft boxes too. Um, I'm going to scroll down on here and see if this, um, has anything else about it, but I guess we can just click on the details here, um, just to go over this for you. So there's the soft box actually right there, um, that goes on the front of it. And, um, I don't know if this is a two light set. Let's see. No, that's that light. So I just clicked on the uh, shop tab on on Photogenic's um, website, and these soft boxes came up. And um, you know, here's one for one twenty four. Here's one for one twenty seven. Um, and what you're going to need is you're basically going to need a, a bigger one and a smaller one. You're going to use the smaller one for the main light, and you're going to use a bigger one for the fill light. So you can kind of check the size of them. Um, you really don't want it to be too big, um, so you're going to have to do some shopping and playing around. But this is basically a soft box, and the light will go into the the um, into the back of it. Let me find that picture again here, real quick, like that, and then produce the light like this. Now, um, again, you want one that's maybe about no bigger than say 16 inches by 16 inches for the. Um, uh, main light, you know, 12 by 12 would be good, 14 by 14, um, or one of these octagon ones, but not a real big light for the 
big soft box for the main light and then a bigger soft box um, for the fill light like that could be 24 by 36 or you know 24 by 24 but a, a bigger one that you're going to use at the back and then the other thing that you will need is um, this is plugged into one of those vagabond units if you, you look at it right there um, you could kind of see that but um, the other thing you will need is a stand so um, you can buy these also um, probably from photogenic as a kit um, easiest thing to do probably would be the, the search through their website and write a few things down and then even give them a call if you want to. Now, the, the cool thing about Photogenic is they actually started in Youngstown, Ohio. And when I had my first set of studio lights, um, I purchased another set from a photographer, um, uh, called Bosch and Pernado, which, um, was in downtown Youngstown. And, um, you know, I was, um, at the time, uh, probably about 21 years old, maybe. Um, and they went out of business and the, the, the photographer, um, Mr. Pernado was, um, in his seventies by then. And these were very old photogenic lights that I bought from him. And I, um, you know, he was just cleaning out his studio and selling these lights. So I brought them back, um, to my studio and plugged them in and they didn't work. And, um, so then I, I didn't know really photogenic was in Youngstown at the time, but I, I called the number and, and um, they asked where I was, and I told them that I was in Boardman, Ohio. And they said, well, we're in Boardman, Ohio. And they, the they, they, guy told me to bring them in and take a look at them. So I, I ran them up to Photogenic, and um, they they actually took me in the back into the workshop, and the guy actually fixed the lights, put a new capacitor in it and so forth for me, and no charge. He um, he uh, was pretty cool. So, you know, I really, this is a good company. They're not in Youngstown anymore, I don't believe. I believe now they're in uh, Chicago or in Illinois somewhere. They they move, but they're still in the United States. And, uh, um, you know, hopefully the customer service is still as good as uh, when it was then. So, um, but um, I've had these other, go to the monolights again. And yeah, let's scroll down here real quick. Do, do, do. I've had several of these Studio Maxes for a long time, like maybe like 10, 15 years, and they um, they work great, and I haven't had any problems with them. And they, the nice thing about them, about the lights today compared to lights like, you know, 20 years ago, is um, they they have a, um, a modeling light. They have a modeling light, and when you choose this light, you can like look at the back of it, but they, they have a separate adjuster for the modeling light and a separate adjuster for the power coming out of the strobe. Um, and so you got to kind of understand what's going on with the modeling light and a strobe light, but the modeling light is just a light that will show you where the flash is going to go. So you can turn that up all the way and see like kind of bright, and it's kind of almost what you see is what you get anymore with these lights. They've refined these so much. Um, back in the day, they only had a modeling light that was in the, in the strobe. And when the modeling light was in the strobe, you kind of got an idea, like you would use that to create your patterns of light and so forth, but it wasn't, it wasn't going to give you the same effect as when the strobe went off. But now they, they pretty much have it nailed down where when you make your adjustment, if you, um, have the strobe light in the same place as the modeling light, that's the power you're going to get. And that's how the picture is going to look, which is, you know, very nice. But, um, the thing to understand is that the modeling light though is not what's exposed. It just, it gets obliterated by the, um, by the strobe light when it goes off. So it's, um, you know, very nice, but so you're going to need to get two of these depending upon the one you get. Again, the studio max is my choice. Um, you know, for I would say for under a thousand dollars, maybe nine hundred dollars, you could get two of these Studio Max um, lights, and all you could also the four hundred watt second ones, and you could um, also get two light stands and uh, two soft boxes, and and that would get you rolling. You'd be a pro, so you could start doing bridal portraits and um, you know dog portraits and people portraits and just about anything that you want to do in a studio. So good choice on um, on the lights. And now let's look at uh, the Pulsey Buff lights. Well, you can tell right away from looking at um, the Pulsey Buff lights that they're professional because they have a Porsche in the picture. So 
um, you know they're good. And these lights that I'm going to look at, they have different levels, again, like Photogenic does. But the ones that I'm going to recommend are these lights called Alien Bees because they're, again, a very simple mono light. You don't have a power pack that this plugs into. You just plug this right into the wall. Now, you could plug it into, again, the Paul C. Buff um, Vagabond uh, thing if you wanted to take this outside and do pictures or something or if you were doing like wedding portraits uh, you know on location inside you could take this and you know plug it into a power pack and um and that would set it off now you know what i mean about when i'm talking about like the old-fashioned power packs is this light had to be plugged into a power pack that was then plugged into the wall but now all of that is inside of these things and that's why they're they're calling them mono lights because they will operate by themselves without being you know plugged into a control thing now if we scroll down a little bit here um you could see some of the different they make this in different colors and you could see kind of see the price here so this is talk the 400s talking about um the watt seconds or light seconds coming out of the is a 400 watt second light and then we go down to double that is an 800 second 800 watt second light and that's um just 50 dollars more so i mean you could get um you know end up getting one of these a 400 watt for your main light and an 800 watt for your fill light and that would really give you some um, variation in, in using these lights for if you wanted to photograph bigger things or you know, group pictures. Or you could get two of these 800 ones and actually turn one down to 400. But like the 400 one, you can't adjust it. And same with the 800 one to like a quarter power, um, half power, three quarter power, and full power. So um, both very, um, very convenient, easy to work with. And um but you, you're going to see you need to get two of these um, for the strobe lights. And then, again, you're going to have to get the stands that they go on. Um, the air cushion stands are, um, are the nicest ones to use because... If your light's on a stand and you get the air cushion one, when you let when you release the stand to go lower, the air kind of like lets the lights let the stand go down slowly. Whereas some of the older stands that you might find that aren't air cushioned, as soon as you release it, you end up the light could end up like you know going really fast down and um, maybe breaking you know breaking something or if the bulb was really hot. Um, you could end up breaking the bulb. So um, I would look for like air cushion stand. And I'm sure that in, um, you know, in the Paul C. Buff website right here, let me move this over here so you can see this, um, that you can, um, they have stands and everything under under kits and stuff, lot light modifiers. So they have it all on here. And I'll just let you look around at that. But I basically just wanted to make this video to show you the, um, the lights that were available and again these are made in the usa nashville tennessee right there so um you know you're buying good american products and you're supporting an american company by buying these lights so um there's if you, you know i looked at b and h's website and they carry both of these they carry the um the policy buff and they carry the photogenic but then they also have like you know 39 other brands um you know a lot of made overseas and um you know, I, I believe in supporting American products and American companies, so um, I recommend looking at these, but um, that's your choice. So anyway, I hope this video helps as far as um, showing you what's available for lighting and, you know, what you're going to need. If you're going to take my studio photography classes, you're going to need um, basically a set of lights. Um, you could start with those clamp-on painting lights and then hopefully move into these, um, into these strobe lights. And um, the reason um, that you want to get these lights now too is like let's say you're thinking about well you know maybe someday i'll get those but if you're if you're seriously considering a career in photography um as far as maybe a, being a portrait photographer a commercial photographer photographing products um you know there's a lot of different jobs you can do as far as um you know as far as commercial photography goes, whether it be, you know, just business portraits. Um, I actually was talking to, I was chatting to a, a photographer down in Boca Raton um, here over the holidays that, um, that I found down there and he just does portraits and um, headshots. He calls his business headshots and for like businessmen or business women that need a headshot for, for a resume or something and they want a professional one, that's what he runs his whole business on. And he's done um, very, very well for himself, but he's in a metropolitan area, you know, where there's a lot of money in Boca. So he um, 
he actually, you know, charges a, a fair price for, um, you know, somebody just to stop in during their lunch hour or during the morning and um, have a headshot done. And he'll, you know, shoot it, touch it up and um, email it to them, um, you know, on their phone or on their computer, wherever they want it. And, um, you know, an hour and, you know, gets a couple hundred bucks for that. So, you know, you could um, easily make yourself a thousand dollars a day doing that if you're in a in a busy area and people, you know, Business people, they don't want to mess around. They don't want to do a selfie. They just want a really nice um, business portrait done. And uh, we'll talk about backgrounds and stuff too in, in another video. But um, you know, these these lights will will treat you right and uh, do you right, and you'll look like a pro using them. So you want to make the investment now. This is my point: is you want to make the investment in your lights now in your career so that you can start using these, um, and you'll be and you'll understand them totally. The more photos you take with them. Um, that's the thing. I, that's one thing I ha seem to have students under having trouble understanding is that the more that you do, the better you're going to be, and the more you're going to understand this. If you just think about it um, and don't do it, you're never going to. It's like fly fishing, you know. Unless you're actually out there f learning how to fly fish and and cast a line, um, that you never really get it. So you have to be out there to do it, um, and you have to use your lights. So now's a good time that you're in school. Um, to actually get yourself a nice set of lights, you know, even if you have to take out a loan um, or, you you know, have to find yourself a 0% um, interest credit card, you can buy yourself a really nice set of strobe lights and um, and start using them and really become, become second nature. You want using these lights, just like your camera, to become second nature, like if you're driving a car. Um and what it, what that means is like when you go in your studio and turn these on, you don't have to fool around trying to remember how to turn them on or what power you want, that you've done enough experimenting as a student that you really get the point of this and you can really make a good portrait. Um, and if you never buy the lights, then you, you never get to that point. And then when you start a studio, you're going to be doing that. And then you're going to shoot somebody's picture and it ain't going to look too good. And that's the kind of reputation you're going to develop early on, and it ain't going to work. So in order for it to work, you need to get the lights now, um, start using them, shoot a thousand portraits for real. You know, shoot a thousand people's portraits, start shooting everybody you know, bring them in, do a portrait of them. And, um, you know, really get to the point where you have a nice portfolio developed too, so you can have some samples on your website of what you do. <coughs> Excuse me and um, be able to show this and that that will when you um, decide to you know turn on the website and start doing customers you're going to be all set up and ready to go so um, anyway I hope that video helps or this video helps and um, if you like the like the video please give me a thumbs up and uh, please smash that subscribe channel and subscribe and you'll see more videos uh, coming your way uh, this one was about photographic uh, lighting um, availability so thank you, Professor Juris signing off.